And I'd, I'd like to hope in my heart of hearts that you've all watched each other's kind of submissions and bits and pieces. Can I ask you, you know, just in turn, what did you get out of it? Or did you get anything out of it? Let's keep it really simple. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get ahead of ourselves here. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll own it. I got an absolute huge amount of talking to each one of you and understanding the trade, and I use the term trade that we do, it, to such a deep level. And that got taken even deeper when I did the three kind of summaries when I pulled out the questions about creating safe space and why we do what we did. And it was like, it was just like a wow moment. And, and the thing that drove me along to do this was that, that I believe so passionately about the work that we do and that you guys do it so well and trying to get it out there into the world to say, this is the work that we do. This is what we achieve. And, you know, my favorite question was, you know, we just don't turn up with a back of, you know, a, a, a van full of drums and chuck them on out there and, and get on with it. But then again, sometimes perhaps we do. <laughs> but I'm just wondering, you know, having watched them all, you know, what did you get from it? So for me, it was, um, it was like everything and I said earlier on about when I'm going out walking now, I'm just I'm, I'm walking with the photographer's mind, even if I don't have a camera with me. And so in the drum circle world, that's the same. So when you invited me to be part of this project, I approached it with my drum circle mind, with my drum circle <clears throat> presence, with my drum circle radar. And so everything that happened from that point on my interview and then me watching all the other interviews was like being in a drum circle as a facilitator. And what my drum circle mind brings is complete openness and non-judgment. I don't go into a circle thinking, I wonder who the best drummer is going to be, or I wonder what the, you know, I just go in there to, to, to fully be present and open myself up to the experience so that I can hear it all and somehow help the group to take that and move into a, 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 a higher place rhythmically uh, and communally with it. So for me, listening to all these amazing people in this group share their perspectives was just like being in a drum circle and hearing all the amazing contributions that are made to creating this beautiful thing as a whole. So I was really, um, I was just enjoying all of it. You know, I would get, I'd get my cup of coffee and you know plug myself in and it's like okay so debbie burney is going to be talking to them i know i'm going to love listening to debbie because i've known debbie for years and i just knew i was going to have a really nice experience of listening to you chat with debbie and and, and each of the people in this room i have a deeply profound personal relationship with like no one in here is a stranger to me i've you, everybody's been at Wiston, i've been at your places and i just enjoyed that profound connection and hearing these people that I love and respect and regard highly in the world talk about doing what they love in the way that they do it. And, and their little bit of light reflected <clears throat> something into my heart. You know, it's like, I, you know, whether I take it in consciously, there's a part of me when I'm open and using the radar, something sticks. The stuff that's supposed to stick sticks, you know, and then I, I find myself in a conversation a couple of weeks later repeating something that Debbie said or repeating something that Jane said or plucking something out from what Helga said. Helga's whole and I have to disagree with you, Helga. I think you're an immensely creative human being and the writing project that you've done about the inner drum circle has inspired me to pick up a project I started some time ago. I'm not going to say anything about it now, but but your writing has made me want to go back and write again so it's so all of those things i think just being in the presence of these amazing human beings can only inspire that was my experience of it i, I found the whole thing inspiring and i was really 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 happy to be a part of it thanks paul debbie turn your mic on <laughs> <laughs> okay 
um, listening to everyone and watching all the videos, I, I was just so deeply struck about how eloquent everybody was. Um, and everyone was saying the same thing, but they each said it individually in such a beautiful way. And I would listen, I would go, damn, why couldn't I say it like that? And then when I watched my own video again, because I know I said to you, oh my God, I look like someone who's on drugs. I'm like so passionate and scary. You know, I mean, how did anyone watch it? I'm not, I, I'm not even, I haven't even looked. So how many, well, you can see how many views there are. Mm -mm, not doing that because that's just too embarrassing. And I thought, oh my God, you just, you just, you probably scared everyone away. But, but taking into account that I was overly passionate, um, I just thought that everyone was singing from the same hymn sheet, um, which was incredibly beautiful. Everybody was saying exactly the same thing. You know, uh, the connection, the bringing people together, just the magic that happens in the circle, the powerfulness of of what people are taking away. And even what, what the, where you did the, what does everyone hope to get out of it? What does everyone hope to leave behind? You know, everyone said it beautifully in their own unique ways, yet they were saying the same thing. So there's this kind of extraordinary, um, what's that beautiful word? Uh, I'm in post-menopause now so you'll have to excuse me that word entrainment we all had that beautiful entrainment you know yet we, we kept our individualness in that so I loved them and I have to say I just absolutely loved watching all the videos you know um, and Ray I'd love to have because I know we didn't get the chance to interview you so there are questions that you know what like what would you like to leave behind you? That was a really powerful question, which I think it'd be nice to hear at some stage of this webinar, your thoughts on that as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, we'll do this, we'll do a round robin on this one and then perhaps you guys yeah. can ask what you want to ask. I have no problem with that at all. Mm -hmm. So Helga, what are your thoughts about the whole series? What did you kind of gain from it, take away from it, leave behind? Well, I totally agree with uh, Debbie and Paul. And thank you, Paul. Um, for what you said about the text, um, this the the um, questions you asked, Ray, um, really made me think and reflect. Um, and sometimes wasn't easy for me to find um, sh short um, answers. And uh, so your questions really made me focus. Um, and I think it helps me every time people ask me something about drum circles um, because the more often you you talk about it or in the, in the, the shorter you put it the, the clearer it um, it becomes in your head so um, yeah it really was um, kind of um, yeah it, it, um, I stepped I stepped forward with the, um, with your questions and I had the same experience like Debbie said um, somehow we are we are all on the same path and everyone is, is putting it in a different way and um and there's a difference here and a difference there um i didn't th think we all said the same but um there was so much in common and i feel it made me feel being part of this family and um uh it felt like i made new friends for example i never met philo before and after listening to her interview <laughs> I thought we we have so much in common, and um, I didn't uh, to to be honest, I didn't understand everything you said, Debbie. Um, but I have the feeling I get to know you better now um, as we meet life. <laughs> so um, we're on this uh, kind of same path. So um, yeah, it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Aga. What about you, Jane? The kind of autobiographical nature of it and just the very the very personal nature of it hearing people's stories and and this great unfolding that we go through as we tread this path and that i think everybody goes through in some way when you encounter this drum circle phenomenon um you know whether we go to one play shop or many year after year that there's you know this this amazing journey going on about people finding their passion and following their passion and um you know taking it as far as it will go um and it's a great joy to witness other people's stories who are also on that path of just really you know diving in deep and 
and exploring this. Um, and I also think it's a real sign and symbol of the maturing of this community as well, that we're starting, you know, have these forums and discussions now and we collectively can take it to that depth. Um, it's no longer one person presenting a point of view anymore. There's several people with really, really good perspectives um, who are all adding something to this field now, which is growing and maturing. I think, I mean, I just want to just to say for myself, you all of you were really honest. You were really upfront. You were happy to go where I um, asked questions to go. No one ever said no. And, you know, for me, that was really quite humbling as well. The fact that you all were open, authentic and honest about there was no one had anything to hide. There was no facade. There was no uh, brick walling that I could detect from my, we didn't you know, have my... a choice. We didn't have a choice. Really. <laughs> what are your thoughts, Stefano? Well, uh, for me, is what was uh it's, it's been yeah it's been a good way to to increase an awareness i take uh, inspiration from a cartoon I, I i watched yesterday with my daughter uh i, I can see that I, I was feeling like a falling leaf um and sometimes i, I feel like that um but I, I can feel watching all the interviews and, and staying with you tonight uh, that we are different leaf, leaves of uh, the same tree. And oh, so it's like you, Ray, are the, you, you gave us the opportunity to be more aware of uh, belonging to a common tree, even if uh, yeah, we are, we are leaves, yeah. but we are different and we belong to the same tree and this is really amazing. So I'm really grateful. Thank you. I think part, that's the other thing that I kind of wanted to really try and investigate and not ex necessarily explore was we are all connected. We are all from the same tree. You may be in Italy and Debbie may be in Ireland and Helga may be in Germany and you guys are in Scotland and Philo's in the north of England and I'm down here but we are all part of the same tree we are you know we are all doing the same work in our different uh, different areas but we're all cut from almost, almost the same cloth and we all have the same ideals and the same passions and the same beliefs and the same drives and the same deep down desire to do good and do what we want to do. And I felt it was really important for me to try and, you know, get the individuality, but also that real kind of connection with everybody that's kind of there, regardless of the miles. Did you see what Paul, you see what Paul just wrote? No, what did he say? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man, yeah. yeah. I love Tree. Yeah, love yeah. it, love it. Love it. <laughs> and awesome. it's also amazing because, uh, you know, uh, we are connected and we exchange life. You know, uh, we can help each other surviving and growing. Yeah, it's really amazing. Yeah. What about you, Philo? How did you find the process? What did you kind of think of looking at you know, looking back at everybody and what was uh, it for you? I, I keep saying this. I told you when, um, be, before we recorded last time as well, uh, that it's been, um, it's, it's been so crucial for me. You, you, have, you have no idea what you've done with that idea. <laughs> you know, we're just coming up with that. One, because I didn't expect, I wasn't expecting to be included. And that's not because I'm trying to be falsely modest. I really, I feel like I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm a green shoot in, into all of this. And, um, but I was right on that track. When you um, asked me to participate, and then when I, I had like a list of things to reflect on, well, I never reflected on those things in relation to my facilitation work, my drumming facilitation work. 
I, and he, he revealed to me uh, consciously, you know, because like Stefano said, there was a, I became um, aware of what was there and what I've been doing, what it meant to me, what I was bringing to it that was my own signature because of the personal nature of the questions. And, uh, you know, the biographical nature, like Jane said, it was, uh, it was, your your questions, your, the investigation, the reflection were directly related to the kind of people that we each are and what it, things meant for us individually. So it was both about, gosh, this is really magnificent work. It, there's, there's so much here, the potential and, and a rich um, creativity in this and possibilities that I hadn't even thought of once I look at it closely and what's my relationship with it and, and what are my gifts what is my what are my passions my preferences what are my reactions who am I in this world so this is big this was big for me because at that point you were talking about creativity now <clears throat> he made me excuse me <clears throat> he, you see I can't even say it. <laughs> <laughs> If you remember the history of our interview, particularly Ray, yeah. it, three goals, three. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I, you know, and the first time, <clears throat> bless you, you ended up not being well, and so we had to cancel. And um, but the other two times, we had the full interview, and then the recording just didn't work. <laughs> we had to do it again, and I thought, what is this that I've got to think about this three times? <laughs> And um, we had to go with the flow and all that. Don't don't be attached to what to your first time. <laughs> yeah. Now you can do it again. What will come out this time? But what that did was that it brought something to me where I was completely floundering, the falling leaf, you know, Stefano. Uh, I was um, there was a cascade of leaves for me. And at that point, to be able to get on to this kind of uh, conversation reconnected me with the community that Paul said, yeah, with belonging to this, this uh, breed of people who think this way and work through this medium and, and wants to have something to do with creative community. And um, he recentered me in what it is that my creativity is about. And immediately after that time, I, <clears throat> I started to create some new programs that involved my the somatic movement that I'm, I'm learning more about. And I created uh, little programs that I started online, which I never would have thought of had we not had that conversation. So it did channel my creativity because for the first time I knew more about what it was that I was doing. I knew what this thing was. So it, it's been really important. And I loved listening to all of you. I mean, I, I kind of know, Stefano, I didn't know you before. Um, but, um, and Elga, we, we didn't have any direct connection. And I felt quite drawn to Elga <laughs> in, in, in the style and, and, and how, we, how we think. But it was so beautiful to know you more in depth in that way, strangely enough, through an interview on a screen. Uh, I, I knew uh, depth about each of you that I hadn't really had the chance to do before. Fabulous. Thanks, Philo. And I have to say, I have to put my hands up. Poor Philo did have to suffer three goes at this. <laughs> One of them when I did end up in hospital, literally like 24 hours before. And then one we did, which was absolutely fantastic. And we were verbally high-fiving each other. It was so moving and brilliant. Oh, this went really well. And it didn't come <laughs> out. We just didn't record. And the sound didn't work for some godforsaken reason. So we were meant to do it three times. <laughs> so no, thank what, you. What thank you for your patience, Philo. Oh, that was good for what me. Strikes me is yeah. Sorry, Philo. What strikes me as everyone is talking is the... I, I might be wrong in this, but I just think... Uh, it's such a heart-centered intention that people are coming from, you know, and that seems to be the common denominator, you know, of this group and the wider group. I think, you know, I know a lot of facilitators. Now, not all of them, are, you know, 
not all of them, but there's, yeah, there's quite a lot of us out there who are heart centered. We don't identify it in that way, but that is the root of what we're doing. Well, I see a lot of them, um, of the spectators today. Mm. I mm. saw uh, in the list mm. are really heart centered. Hello to everyone. <laughs> well, on, on the subject of heart, I'm going to ask you your first question, Ray. <laughs> um, did a nice little segue in there. Um, so I, I, I know from having spent many, many, many hours with you in the play shop about your service to the group and about how you put everybody else above yourself and, and you model that beautifully. And I'm, I'm curious, I, I know why you do this for all the other people out there and the benefits that you want to bring into people's lives. But I'm curious about what what's in it for you. Why do you do it from a from a from a Ray perspective? What do you get from being the person that you are and doing what you do in the world? This project or drumming in general or? Well, well the, the yeah, the, the, the you being you, this this project is part of your work. Yeah. It's not all of your work, and, and part of your work is counselling people, and part of your work is facilitating rhythmical programmes, and all of your work is about creating safe space for people to grow in, in one form or another. And this project was exactly the same thing. It was just an extension of that. So I'm just curious about what, you know, it's. I'm asking you what your why is. Why do you get up in the morning to do any of these things? <laughs> cool, blimey, get comfortable, everybody. <laughs> 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 you, you i've never it's i have no idea i um <laughs> <laughs> there we go next <laughs> what's your favorite ice cream flavor <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you you can think about it and come back to me in a couple of weeks no i think i don't you know this part of me the project was about it's that part of me that believes so passionately in what we do and I was it's funny I've always known that drumming has really really meant something to me ever from being really really little from seeing my dad being a drummer it's always done something to me and I played in a band and it's really done something to me and I couldn't put my finger on it and then I went to a wedding in South Africa for those that don't know me I worked in South Africa for four years and my best friend there got uh, married and I was an usher and he booked drum cafe to keep people busy when the photographs were being taken. The reason I'm not in any of the photographs is because I was, <laughs> I was drumming going, wow, this is an amazing experience, <laughs> an amazing experience. I want to do this. And then I went to Jamaica and I finally came back here and I thought, this is moving me. This is stuff is shifting. I'm changing. Why is this doing it to me? And then I went to Arthur's course in Stratford and I started to shift and move again. And I think what it is, is I want people to share this shift and this change and this move and this growth and be exposed to to all this kind of the possibilities that are kind of out there. And and this is just part of this process. And I think this is probably the most honest answer um, because this is just coming completely out of my you know unconscious as I sit here is that it's just kind of, I just want everyone to share the journey I'm on. I'm on a journey and I want you all to be on the same train with me because this is a bloody great train going in a great direction with great people on board. And look at us, we are, we are doing so much good and it's good for you. Come and join, jump on board, be with me. And I think that's kind of, and I get up in the morning, not so much in the last few months, but I do, I still get up in the morning going, what can I do now? How can I spread the message? What can I do? How can I help people? What, what, what is it I can do? What can I do with my skills? What can I help? You know, and I keep, and I like to keep myself busy on that side of stuff. So yeah, I think I just want people to be on the same journey that I'm on. And I know you guys are on the same journey as well. And I go and doing those interviews, I've gone, you know, God, this is such a great journey we're on. This is such an amazing journey. And when I did the editing, listening to your answers over and over again and just kind of tweaking sound, I was going, 
God, these people really have got it down. They really know what they're doing. They really do understand this kind of work. <laughs> Not till now. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's kind of, it's, I don't know. It's a sense. Yeah, I think it's just, I just want people to just be with me and, and experience that kind of excitement that I have and this joy and love of everything that kind of comes with it. And because I like growth and particularly personal growth, being a counsellor, this is such a quick vehicle for personal growth. You know, and it's um, it's like lots of people, Barry, God bless him, who did a little short, uh, short for us, and Simon. And there was someone I was talking to who did an MA on using drumming in counselling. And they said, by far, it's the quickest method of getting deep into stuff. You know, it can cut 20 minutes, 30 minutes out of, um, you know, initial questioning, initial questions and answers of building a relationship. You can cut it through like that with a drum. And I've witnessed that as well. So it's almost like a, a parallel journey. that I know the power of this instrument. I want people to come along with me on this journey because, you know, it's really funny as I talk here and I realise I'm talking quite quickly. I felt I was in the back carriage on this journey. I was in the guard's van. And now I feel, yeah, I'm on the I'm on the engine plate. I'm I'm on the engine with you guys, and we're driving this along now. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas before I was hanging on the back of the guard's van. <laughs> right. I think you've just blown my my passionate out of the water with that. That was very passionate. Well said. Fire. <laughs> So I'm really happy that the question animated you like that, Ray. That's you know, it, it, so. I, I I don't think any of the words that came out of your mouth were, were relevant. The 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 animation of you as a human being in answering that question gave me the answer that I wanted, and I knew the answer anyway, right? Because I've worked with you. That's why. That's why when the position that you took in the UK Play Shop team became a became available there was only one human being on planet earth that was going to get it <laughs> right we didn't make a mistake or have to think about who we just knew thank that you. that job was yours because no one else could do it yeah thank you and that's why we picked you because that's you right you well how you just answered that question was just was just your soul coming out to play it was beautiful so thank you for that no worries anyone more anyone for any more yeah. <laughs> what? Where's it going? Where's this train going? What's your um? Oh, blimey. For the future, or for how you see things developing. For me, I'm busy writing something at the moment, so I don't know how that's going to play out. Um, it's and it's kind of it's a mixture of my kind of counselling background and my personal journey through that kind of therapy and nothing too frightening therapy and to where I got to where I am with the drumming and how important drumming is. I think it's just writing for my own personal edification uh, as part of my own therapeutic journey. I don't know if anything will come out of that. I think, you know, hand on heart, I think it will. <laughs> but it's it's still kind of it's just it's just lots of notes still and paper and books and stuff like that yeah so that part of it on an intellectual level is continuing i think on a drumming level i think i you know i can't wait to go back but it will nowhere near be the level it was before because i think i shared this with all of you and with anyone who listened to me is that i was pretty close to burnout and um, I need to be a bit more kind of um, not choosy because I, I've got a, a, a huge kind of swathe of special needs groups who will never, ever drop and I'll always work with. But perhaps look at nourishing me as much as nourishing other people that are around me as well. I think the biggest learning I've probably had in this break is self-nourishment, is nourishing me because, you know, I don't do it enough. And but I feel quite nourished now and I really want to go out there and share it with people <laughs> and that's not helping. So I think my drumming journey will continue. I think the shape is going to change a little bit. I'm not sure how that's going to change. Um, 
I think I would like to, I want to travel more. I want to, I want to go to um, Italy. I want to go to Germany. I want to go back to Spain. I want to go across to India. I want to go back to Malaysia. I want to get part, be part of those communities and feel those communities. And that's again, one of the drives behind this project was the fact that we are such a worldwide organization, so connected and doing such fantastic work. I want to kind of feel that energy from elsewhere as well. So maybe a more global kind of me, as well as a kind of UK based me. And I have some ideas about a project I want to do as well, but that's still very much in germ in kind of germination. So lots of ideas kind of floating around Jane, but um, and I think this has been an ideal time to kind of put some meat on the bones for the one of a better expression. Yeah. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, that was a great answer. <laughs> oh, you smoothie, you. <laughs> and I, I love this idea of this time as a, as a time for dreaming and visioning as well. Yeah. And not just feeling stuck. No. Yeah, and, then, and I went through the this sucks period and, um, you know, I'm, and the, this project really pulled me out of this sucks era, yeah? And then I was ill and then the project again pulled me out of being ill and kind of gave me direction again. Um, but I think this really is the last, I've wrung the last drops out of it this time, I think. And it's time to come on with um, with something with something new. But you're right. There's, I do have probably a bit the same as everybody else is those moments where, you know, shit, this really sucks, doesn't it? And then I kind of like, you know, an hour later I go, no, come on, let's get on with, you know, this is what we're going, this is where we're going, this is what we're trying to do. And today was a great example. We had Seve, Seve Velasco on um, this afternoon. And that guy's energy is just totally and utterly kind of, he just pulls you up. And yeah. I, I, you know, I came out. I came out of that session going, "I need to drum. I need to go <laughs> drum with some people," <laughs> <laughs> which was good because I was feeling a little bit kind of flat at, po at points um, today. So that was awesome. So there you go. <laughs> any more for any more? Yeah, I want to go go back into your past a bit, Ray. Uh -oh. um, <laughs> Uh, I think we all know you, you worked, uh, you, you had um, um, a well paid and safe job once in your life. Um, and then you changed to be a counselor and um, drum circle facilitator. And um, I wonder um, how, how did this change uh, your way of looking at the world, at people, at um, at things, at relationships, at everything. The the job that I had for about twenty five years was quite high pressured, quite negative, very cynical, very critical, um, pretty dangerous at times. And it was it was bringing out not the best in me. I was getting to the end of my twenty five years. I'd worked myself reasonably well up the ladder. I wasn't getting the satisfaction that I used to get. Um, and I noticed a shift and a change that had been happening in kind of humankind or the humankind that I'd been with in that um, I spent eight years abroad. You know, I spent, I've already said four years in South Africa, four years in Jamaica, which is an incredible experience, really mind blown growth of my own way and meeting different cultures, different people face to face you know learning drumming in an african village and all this kind of stuff and it kind of really opened my eyes meanwhile back in the uk it become really really cynical there'd been a real nasty turn in the way management was doing it was really becoming quite toxic quite vile um people were stabbing each other in the back and it was just like there was no protection for any risk taking you weren't looked after anymore and i came back and thought Nah, don't want to part. Don't want to do this anymore. Just don't want to do this anymore. And I honestly think some of the drumming I've been doing in South Africa, the shift has started to it started to shift me. Things have started to move, and and then you know, I went to as I say, I went to um, Stratford in two thousand and eight and met other people, and the shift started to move again. 
and I've started to realize that, you know, relationships don't need to be toxic. They don't need to be cynical. They don't need to be angry. They don't need to be, um, you don't need to put people down. Sarcasm doesn't have to be the best form of humor. Um, it's kind of, and there was, you know, there's a real big shift. And, you know, and, you know, as I started realizing this isn't working for me anymore. And um, someone actually said, why don't you think about being a counselor? because I used to solve most of people's problems um, within my team. They would come to me and I'd go and sort it out or I'd talk them through what needed to be done. So then I trained as a counselor and that opened up even more elements of me, went into personal therapy, which you have to do being a counselor, spent three years in personal therapy that opened me up even more. And then with the drumming going on top in 2010, I said, that's it. I've had enough of this. And I just, you know, left qualified as a counselor in 2012 started my drumming business in 2010 and kind of the rest is history and what i really like is where i was before it was about surviving where i am now is about growing and there are two different things thriving yeah thriving yeah thriving nice and they're two very different things. When you get up every morning and get on the train to work and you come home at like, you know, 11 o'clock at night, you are surviving. When you do this drumming work and you are growing and thriving and seeing people and grow and thrive in front of you, it's just just incredibly rewarding. And it's such a mate and the shift in how I work with people, how I understand relationships, how I understand talking to people and listening to people and just being in the presence of people who are wiser than me who have more wisdom more understanding who've traveled more seen more of the world who want to share their experiences with me um it's you know it's where i am now is exactly the opposite of where i was 10 years ago you cannot get more polar opposite both as a person and in the kind of business I was in. And I still bump, I still meet with people from my old work and they can't believe the shift and change that, you know, this is the same person in front of them. There wow. we go. <laughs> I think we are all very happy you made this change <laughs> and you are here with us. <sighs> what, what I would love to say uh, is that I, I don't have questions for you, but um, I can clearly remember your facilitation in Winston in 2016, and maybe you were the first one to facilitate. I'm not sure, but or one of the first. And I can really remember, and I said, "Wow, <laughs> this man is great." And yeah, for me that was that was that experience was the starting point, but I didn't know a lot of things about you. So today, tonight, you are giving me more reasons to love you. So thank you. <laughs> thank you.